Hello everybody, how is everyone doing? As for me, I'm doing fine. I just got back from my parents' place and I'm relaxing after the drive. I also got a couple of interviews coming up so the job search is going pretty smoothly. The only problem is that the jobs I'm getting interviews for are similar to my previous job. I mainly left my previous job to try and get a new job in a different but related field. However, that is not going really well. Anyways, we'll see how the interviews play out. For this video, I'll be going over Bitcoin. I'll go over some current events that happened up until now and look at Bitcoin's price action. After that, I'll end the video with a portfolio update. On last week Tuesday, MicroStrategy stated that it bought around 3,907 Bitcoins for roughly $177 million between July 1st and August 23rd. This landed him with an average price of $45,294 per Bitcoin. In total, MicroStrategy has around 108,992 Bitcoins with an aggregate purchase of $2.918 billion. MicroStrategy's average cost per Bitcoin is $26,769. Overall, Michael Saylor did pretty well as Bitcoin is trading almost double for what he bought them for. It should be interesting how MicroStrategy stock will react when we see Bitcoin make its exponential move upwards. Also earlier last week, we saw a new FUD surrounding the growing complaints about Coinbase accounts being hacked. CNBC posted an article that details several interviews of previous Coinbase customers that had their accounts hacked. The article then went on saying that crypto space is like the wild wild west as there are no insurances such as the FDIC or SIPC. There is not much to say except for this is the FUD and therefore it can be ignored. On Friday of last week, we saw the Deputy Director of Financial Consumer Rights Protection Bureau of the People's Bank of China say that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are not legal tenders and have no actual value as support. He also advised the public to increase its risk awareness and stay away from the crypto market to protect their own pockets. The institution also plans to crack down on the space by blocking crypto trading websites, applications, and corporate channels. He finished off his speech with this quote, If the general public finds clues about illegal fundraising crimes, they must promptly report to the relevant departments. Overall, this is just China fund and it is pretty significant at this point as all the miners have moved away from China. We'll end this small news segment with what happened at Jackson Hole. Jerome Powell said the US central bank could begin slowing down asset purchases this year as the US economy recovers from the pandemic, but it won't be in a hurry to raise interest rates. Powell didn't provide a specific timeline for starting scaling back in Fed's $120 billion per month bond buying purchases. Powell also said that the current inflation is transitory because of the COVID-19 supply chain problems. Markets like this news as US stocks made new highs while treasury yields and the dollar fell. Let's now look at some charts to see how exactly Jerome Powell affected the markets. Here we have the S&P 500. As you can see, on Friday, we did make a new high to the upside after Powell remained relatively dovish. Furthermore, we are still above this green line. This green line has been in play for a while, ever since the COVID crash. Till now, this green line has been an important support line for major lows the market was making during a pullback. Up until now, it has held and with the move on Friday, we're way above it. The second chart we'll be looking at is the Nasdaq 100. As you can see, we have this ascending wedge. The upper line is made up of a couple of higher highs while the lower one is mainly made up of two wicks. An ascending wedge is a bearish pattern as it suggests a breakdown is going to happen. We can see that we're way past the 3 fourths region, so it's weird it hasn't broken out yet. If we disregard the lower line and just look at the upper line, we see that we're into heavy resistance. I would expect to see some sort of pullback if there is no stimulus large enough to push the Nasdaq past the strong resistance line. As for the 10 year, we see that we close below this trend line made of lower highs. This is pretty bearish in itself as we're keeping this line as a resistance for a while and broke out of it recently but never was able to hold it as support after going for the retest as shown on Friday's close. The final graph we have is the DXY. As you can see, we fell off from a recent high that we made last week and are going towards this red line that's made up of lower highs. It would be surprising to see if the dollar falls and tests this red line again. If the test fails and we see the dollar fall, then the stock market as a whole would rally as this line is a very strong resistance line turned support. Let's now look at Bitcoin. As you can see, we did break this upward sloping green trend line on Thursday. However, the next day, we saw us close above it. Currently, we see that we're trying to break out under this trend line, but only time will tell if we will continue progressing at this angle. 
we are also interacting with this downward sloping green line. As you can see, it did touch with a lot of intermediate tops, so it's a pretty strong trend line. It also was interacting with price a lot. However, we did break it on the same Thursday. We are once again above it, so hopefully this continues to hold as support. Other than that, let's look at this green candle. If we draw horizontal lines from the body of the candle and the wicks, we see that we are in the areas of fairly important lows. Therefore, it isn't surprising that we're having trouble getting over the $50,000 area. Furthermore, if we add the psychological meaning of $50,000, it isn't surprising that we're testing some areas below it before resuming above the $50,000 mark. As for Ethereum, we seem to be in some sort of channel. The lower two lines have been in play for a while, and we see that in the past, they served as upper bounds and lower bounds for price when Ethereum was in a channel. It looks like we're range bound in between these two lines again. However, I have to admit that this line is not the cleanest line as we can see that the wicks and the bodies don't really line up as well as they should. Let's now end the video with a portfolio update. Here we see that Bitcoin is still trading under the $50,000 mark. As mentioned before, there is a lot of resistance around the $50,000 region so it's not surprising to see Bitcoin struggling. Overall, I'm up 14% off this trade which isn't so bad. Here we have Ethereum. Ethereum has been performing somewhat well as we are back up 400% in terms of total return. However, it is still range bound and I'm suspecting that it's waiting for Bitcoin to test its all time high before Ethereum decides to. This is because Ethereum usually makes a move a week or so delayed after Bitcoin. The final chart we have is Litecoin. As you can see, we are still trading under the $180 mark. When looking at this chart over the weekend, I can say for certainty that it's just mimicking Bitcoin. This once again confirms that I should have used my money I put into Litecoin and put it into Ethereum, which is outperforming Bitcoin currently, or just put it into Bitcoin, since Litecoin is just following Bitcoin, but is much riskier than Bitcoin. With that, I'm going to end this video. If you like this video, press the like button. If you have any questions about this video, leave a comment below. If you want to watch more videos like this, press the subscribe button. This is Books of the Stock Market, and I'll see you around next week. Thanks.